In this episode of Wimpy Stories, we're going to change things up a bit. Before we hear from Viv, we're going to explore a little history, make some assumptions about motive, and share some trivia. We know very little of Burr Wright's childhood, so we can only make guesses. We do know that he liked to give folks nicknames. I was Pete. So here we go. E.C. Seeger's comic strip, Thimble Theater, made its debut on Friday, December 19, 1919. It focused on the relationship of ham gravy, his sweetie olive oil, and her brother Castor. Every installment started with the cast list indicating which characters olive oil and ham gravy were playing. At this time, Burr Wright, born on November 19, 1911, was just nine years old. After the addition of the popular character Popeye on January 17, 1929, the title of the comic strip was changed to Symbol Theater featuring Popeye the Sailor. Popeye gave the strip star quality. His quirky can-do mindset was manna for Depression-era America. In 1933, the strip moved to the big screen with a series of Popeye the Sailor cartoon shorts for Paramount Pictures. Over 109 episodes were filmed. Burr Wright was not quite 18. Popeye has a long and rich history spanning almost a century and is one of the most recognizable and beloved cartoon characters in the world and is consistently regarded as one of the best ever created. In addition to Popeye, the main characters are Olive Oil from the original Thimble Theater. After Popeye joined the cast, she became his eternal sweetheart, and the two have stuck through thick and thin to face many challenges and adventures together. Bluto was created in 1932 and would go on to become Popeye's best known enemy. Jay Wellington Wimpy, or just Wimpy, is a hefty hamburger lover and Popeye's best friend known for his mooching ways and a deceptively high level of intelligence. He is a soft-spoken and cowardly gentleman who will do whatever it takes to get a free hamburger, often with the promise to gladly repay the kind soul that gives him one come Tuesday. I gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. We can only surmise that Popeye had a major impact on a young Burr Wright and accounts for his choice of nicknames for his first two children. I know Popeye was a major character in my youth. Now for some trivia. Eugene the Jeep was introduced to the comic strip on March 13, 1936. His language is limited to the word Jeep. In the 1938 short, The Jeep, Popeye presents the animal to olive oil and sweet pea with the simple explanation, the Jeep's a magical dog and could disappear in things. Many suggest that the soldiers of World War II were so impressed with the new Willis light utility vehicle that they informally named it after Eugene the Jeep, as it was small, able to move between dimensions, and could solve seemingly impossible problems. In 1936, the spinach capital of the world, Crystal City, Texas, erected a statue to honor E.C. Seeger and Popeye for their influence on America's spinach-eating habits, making Popeye one of the first cartoon characters ever immortalized in public sculpture. Now on to Viv's discussion of her names. Okay, this is about my name. My mother's name was May Vivlin, no, Marie Vivlin uh, Surgeon. When she was adopted at age seven, they didn't like her name, so they changed it to May. Well, when I came along, she decided to name me Vivlin Marie. And so that's what I was, was Vivlin Marie. I don't know how Betty got her name, but when we were little kids, <laughs> Betty and I were called Popeye and Wimpy 
Now that was our nickname that Daddy gave us for quite a while. And I guess Betty got tired of it and she told him that she didn't want to be called Popeye anymore. So anyway, he called me Wimpy the rest of my life. Uh, but he did shorten it to Wimp. But anyway, it's always been a bone of contention. Uh, I got a statement from Sears for Violin Courtney. Now, my name wasn't Violin, but everybody called me different things. They never could pronounce it. When Mother and Daddy had their 50th wedding anniversary, a little old lady came up to me and she says, Oh, you're Burr Rice, one of Burr Rice's kids, aren't you? You're not Betty, you're the other one. And I said, you're right. And I smiled sweetly and walked away. To hell with her, <laughs> she didn't know who my, my name was. <laughs> But anyway, I had a problem with the name all my life. So I go to folks one weekend and I said, I'm going to change my name. And mother says, well, why would you do that? And I said, well, I just never have liked it. My dad spoke up and he said, well, I always liked your name. And I said, then why do you call me Wimpy? Case closed. I never did change my name, but I'm still Wimp. He liked to nickname everybody. When Mike was born, he called him Pete. When Bruce was born, he became High Pockets. We haven't decided whether he nicknamed the favorites or the, or the ones he didn't like. <laughs> he never had a nickname for Robin. He never had a nickname for any of the other kids that I can recall. So, so how did he, how did he name, uh, how did he come up with high pockets? Well, because Bruce had a pair of jeans and his legs were only about this high, and so the pockets on his jeans were so close to the ground. <laughs> and my dad says, "Well, look at that, high pockets." <laughs> so I, anyway, that's why that's where the name Wimpy comes in. And you know, you just learn to live with it. <laughs> Well, it was violin, and it was uh, violin, and it was uh, V-E-V-O, and I finally would say to people, well, it's like Evelyn, only Vivlin. They could understand Evelyn, but they couldn't understand Vivlin. And so nowadays, as I've gotten older, they just refer to me as Ms. Wright. <laughs> <laughs> you go to the doctor's office, they say, oh, they'll, they'll call the patient ahead of you, and they'll say, Barbara, or, or Betty, or what have you, but then they come to my turn, and it's uh, Miss, uh, uh, Miss Wright. <laughs> yeah.